Today we got Saints Row 4, released on this day and on these platforms. If you couldn't tell already, this Volition Marathon is hitting really hard. I wish I could say that this is the last video of the series, but sadly it is not the case. I gotta make my $60 back one way or another. Now I'll be playing this on my PC, just like I did with Saints Row 2. Thankfully there's no tweaking with the settings this time. There are some issues here and there, but that's about it. And uh, I got nothing else to talk about in the intro, so let's get to the story. Remember how in Saints Row 3 you were given a choice to either save Shandi or kill Kilbane? Well, in this story we can completely disregard the Kilbane option, and you might be surprised, but I don't have much of an issue with this. Because it would be way too much work to have a story that splits off depending on your past actions. And I'm sure that barely anybody went to the airport to air out Kilbane. Plus, it's not like it's advertised as one of those your choices will affect a narrative games, which often means that your choices will be tossed in the garbage. Just like that one overrated game. Oh no, I was talking about Telltale's The Walking Dead. Alright, hey, 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 everybody calm down, calm, calm down, put, put your bumbleclot weapons down. Alright, I said what I said, alright? After Cyrus was embarrassed by the Saints, he decided to link up with some terrorists so he can blow up Washington and take over the United States. Oh, okay, so it's supposed to be a dumb idea because he's insane now, I guess. The Saints are brought in to assist MI6 agent Asha... I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that. She's working with Matt Miller, which explains why he was spared in the last game. At first, I thought it was kind of weird that out of all the people they brought back, they went with this dude, but then again, their whole roster is weak as hell. Just look at their second string. Oleg? Okay. Zemos? Okay. But Josh Burke? Meh. Viola? Meh. And she's nowhere to be found in this game. Like, what's up with Spicy Stars not being able to find consistent work outside of the spicy industry? Uh, I should've said Spice World. No, that's a stupid line. Cut that. And they can't bring back Angel because Hulk Hogan was not having the best time during 2012. You're probably wondering why I'm being so nonchalant about this, cause you know, darky. Well, most people hate Hulk Hogan because they think he's racist. I hate Hulk Hogan because he screwed over the Macho Man. We're not the same. A real fight between Hulk Hogan and the Macho Man Randy Savage. What's wrong with that Hulk Hogan? What's wrong with that you coward? What's wrong with that you wuss? Cyrus and the boss get into a QTE fight, then Cyrus gets shot into a vat of acid, lava, toxic waste, I don't know nigga pick one. However, he was still able to launch the missile despite belly flopping. Okay, the boss decides to climb onto the nuke with his spidey hands and disables it. Hello. You know, there's probably a joke you can make about the boss being elected as president and how it mirrors the real world, but this came out on 2013, two years before everything got a... Uh, Pokemon go to the polls! Interesting. In terms of our cabinet, Pierce, Shondi, and Kinsey have jobs, as expected. We also got Benjamin King back. Well, kinda. He doesn't really act like the former Vice King's boss, and the original voice actor passed away. Kind of explains why he wasn't in Saints Row 3, although I'm sure they would've left him out because they wouldn't want to alienate their audience audience or whatever dumbass excuse they used when Dex was missing. On the inverse, we have Keith David, the VA for Julius, but since he got smoked, we have the voice actor himself in the story. Hey, I'm not complaining. In this administration, he's our vice president, and as VP, he gives us a choice to either push the hashtag cure cancer bill or the hashtag stop world hunger bill. Time to make cancer public enemy number one. Your decision means nothing. You'll know why in a couple of seconds. A few moments later. So aliens attack the White House. Oh, how far we've come. These guys are led by Zenyak. He abducts Kinsey and Shandi. Hello, well, Shandi needs to be saved again. And later on, Keith David, Pierce, Benjamin King, Asha, Matt Miller, and the boss herself got abducted as well. The boss wakes up in a 50s sitcom with her housewife making breakfast. Uh, okay, that's egregious. Lesbians didn't exist in the 1950s. And someone named Dex stopped by earlier. I didn't recognize him, so I just sent him away. <laughs> When the townsfolk start acting a little weird, Kinsey calls us and explains that the boss is trapped in the simulation. Kinda like that episode. Jason makes an inaccurate comparison, please disregard. 
show. Zen Yang does not like the direction that the season is going. I know, they should have stopped at their season 2. And he decides to drop the boss into the new open world map. Scratch that, it's just Steelport with floating shit. When we get situated in Neo Steelport, Kinsey tells us to go on a collectathon so we can get our new superpowers. Yeah, speaking of Neo, we now have the ability to fly, well, falling with style, super speed, and super hops. Oh how far we've- Eventually, the boss makes it out of the Matrix world, and after a fight with the Putty Patrol, she's reunited with the Saints on the ship. Well, some of them. Uh, okay, two of them, Keith and Kenzie, the latter of whom still tries to get in touch with Oleg, but then- You want me to leave a message? Ugh. It's all gone. Well, I'd say this was a productive day. That's a pretty reserved reaction to watching your planet blow up. They're like, damn, bro, that's crazy. I lived there. <laughs> I don't know. Rest in peace, Burt Reynolds, I guess. You know, I originally wanted to list all the characters that were just sent to the other world, but after playing Saints Row 3, I'm sure Volition had no plans for most of these guys. Like, do you honestly believe they had plans for Luce or Wong? This does mean that both Kilbane and Dex are dead. Now, Kilbane, fuck that nigga who cares about him. Although, it does show how much of a shit job Volition did in Saints Row 3. He was such a terrible antagonist that they didn't feel like putting him in the next game. And no, this this doesn't count. But Dex, on the other hand, oh boy, I imagine having a character who betrayed the protagonist, tried to kill Homie on two separate occasions, had a whole DLC about him, and at the end of the series, we don't even get to have our revenge. Again, I do have to say, these guys just witnessed the Earth explode, and they're taking it pretty well. The boss turns around and is like, I'm gonna go save my friends now. <laughs> okay, cool. The main chunk of this game is saving our allies from their own personal nightmare simulations. Now, there are a bunch of filler missions, but I'm just gonna give them that middle child treatment. The first person we save is Matt, and when we return to the ship, the crew is looking at a simulation of a plane. You might be thinking, who's on that plane? Well, apparently, it's Johnny Gad. Johnny Johnny Gat's return. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's hold that off until he's actually here. These rescue missions are often prefaced by a quick bio of the character we're saving. It's basically a way for the audience to catch- Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Something's not right here. This scene where Johnny Gat is picking up Shandi, that's from the veteran child mission, where the boss character, not Gat, his ass was too busy getting stabbed by the Ronin. Like I said in the last video, I'm about 95% sure that prior to this game, Gat has said one thing to her. So what do we do now? We listen. It's one thing to say that Shandi and Johnny are extra cool with each other in Saints 3 because at least you could say that they became better friends in between games. But retroactively editing a scene to make it adhere to a character element is not a great idea. These dudes have reached Windex drinking levels of stupidity. When we reach the front of the airplane, we find Shandi. Turns out that this is her nightmare. And do you remember what happened after Johnny got quote unquote killed? I'm coming, Shandi. The plane transitions to a club, a familiar place if you played the only all around solid sequel in the series. This was a place where Veteran Child took Shandi after kidnapping her. And there he is with the old Shandi. Mom, right now. Hey, sometimes your exes try to kill you. What can you do, you know? You want to party? No, this isn't me. Shandi, are you okay? This is getting weird. Great, now there's two of them. I'm assuming this is done to please both sides of the audience. So now the fans of the old version and all two of the fans from the new version are satisfied. Just to be clear, the one labeled as Fun Shandi is not the real Shandi. We're stuck with this bitch over here in IRL. We weren't even looking for her in the first place. Need I remind you, the crew thought that this is Gat's nightmare. She just got lucky because Lord knows her dumbass ain't making it out of the plane by herself. Speaking of people who need saving, Pierce is next on the list, then Asha Sudoku. Once more for old time's sake? Yeah, why not? Cringe! <laughs> Benjamin King is the next person we have to rescue. Wow, I am dashing through this story. I'll explain this one though. King is trapped in the OG Stillwater with the Vice Kings on his tail. I guess he's still butthurt about his gang betraying him. Recognize that place? Sure I do. This is where I got my start. 
I was too scared to even talk back then. It is amazing how one little line can piss me off so much. Okay, first of all, if you've ever played Saints Row 1, then you know damn well that the player was anything but timid. There are two ways to look at it. From a narrative writing point of view, he, she, how homie didn't talk too much for the sake of comedy. When the player finally did say something, he showed how sarcastic, nonchalant, and funny he was. And from an in-story aspect, there is not much for the player to say anyways. He was a drone, the person they sent to do dangerous tasks. When Julius, Johnny, or Dex talked to him, it was to send him on a mission and rarely anything else. The homie was running around fighting dudes toting rocket launchers like Rondo number 9. He wasn't scared he just came in, did his job, and left. That's about it. Man, this game has a nasty habit of retconning stuff for no reason, and we didn't even get to Johnny yet. Now don't you worry, his situation is the magnum opus of fuckery. After the boss squares up with Tanya, we finally get to save Johnny Gatto. Turns out that he's trapped in a beat em up arcade. His personal nightmare is watching his girlfriend Aisha dying over and over again. As a side note, I like how the boss's clothes are accurately depicted in the simulation. Good, Good job. job. In Saints of Rage, the boss and Gat face off against the Vice Kings and the Ronin, the two gangs that gave him the most trouble back in the day. After Warren and Jin are defeated, Johnny escapes from his pod. When we find him, he explains what happened to him back on Saints Row 3. Okay, if you've never played this game, I'm gonna need you to mentally prepare yourself. So I'm in the plane doing my thing. Seem your reputation doesn't do you justice. Johnny Gat's return makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Tango mucho preguntas, but I'll just give you the two main ones. First, if Gat was abducted, then why was his body brought up in the last game? The body of Mr. Gat will be a message for all who oppose the syndicate. It's time we went back home and buried Johnny. I've looked everywhere, and when I say everywhere, I mean the wiki and the audio logs, and I couldn't find anything about a body double or something. It's a crucial part of the story, and they just completely forgot about it somehow. It's not like Zane Zaniac was shown to have the ability or the technology to construct a fake dead body, and also have that fake dead body come back to life, cause remember, Zombie Gat was a thing. Ladies, gentlemen, and the demons in between, this is what happens when you write yourself into a corner and you have a deadline to meet. You're telling me he abducted you years before his invasion? Because he thought you single-handedly could stop him? Yeah. That brings me to my other question. Why the hell did Zinyak keep Gat alive if he knew this nigga could solo him? Did nobody at the Volition HQ not realize how much of a crackhead this makes the main antagonist? Look, I know I'm not supposed to care about the logistics and appreciate that Johnny Gat is back, but no, it's just way too fucking stupid. We have reached levels of retconning that we have never seen before, like Sonic pales in comparison, mainly because Sonic stories were never that great to begin with, but at least they didn't try to rewrite a crucial plot point in a direct sequel. But fine, okay, all right. Gat is back. In fact, we've saved all of our allies from their simulations, so now we can go after Zinyak. There's some fluff in between, but I don't really feel like mentioning it. Okay, fine. Kinsey gets kidnapped because Keith David docks the ship. He was the voice actor for Julius. I am rolling on the floor laughing right now. And he basically says, my fault, OG, when Roddy Roddy Piper beats his ass. Okay, I'm definitely not explaining that. Kinsey gets tossed into a simulation, so of course we have to save her. And when we do just that, she thanks us by socking the boss in the face. Back in Saints Row 2, the boss would've blah blah blah. Let's just get to the final mission. The finale of Saints Row 4 starts with the boss choosing which team of two is going to help her put some key into a mainframe or something. Yeah, remember when Johnny said he was abducted because he was capable of taking Zinyak by himself? Well, apparently Volition didn't, because he's just as useful as the rest of the allies. It's so dumb, it's brilliant. No! It's just dumb! When we finally reach Zinyak, he calls in his Titan and holy shit, is that Zerg? Never mind, I'm reaching. Once we get that health bar down to zero, we're given one final QTE in the series. And thank Allah, cause I'm getting sick of these dumbass- 
Okay, plus 10 points for the suplex. Fucking bastard pack over here. The boss pulls a sub zero and uses Zinyak's head as a pimp cane. She basically inherited all of his possessions, including a servant that's just now being introduced to the story, who tells us that we can use time travel to bring back the earth. In other words, this, this all meant nothing. I'm gonna move on to the DLC before my brain folds itself. The first mission pack for this game is Enter the Dominatrix. It was originally supposed to be in Saints Row 3, but they pushed it back to SR4, which explains the style of this DLC. The story is told like a behind the scenes interview. I don't like the implications this has for the entire series, but I'm just gonna pass it off as a shitty joke. Here we see Zinyak as a mini boss, and he gets his ass kicked in seconds. This is a joke where they acknowledge that QTEs are stupid. I just want to say that making fun of a dumb story slash gameplay choice that you've added into to the game does not nullify how stupid it is. Saints Row 4 does this a lot. See Shandi and Fun Shandi. Donnie makes an appearance. He was supposed to be in Saints Row 4, I think. I don't know if they were joking or not, but he was seemingly left out because. Well, you figure me, Matt, and Donnie all kind of filled the same Techie Mary Sue role. You only needed two of us to bigger, so Donnie had to go. Hey, uh, Homebolios, th that's not what Mary Sue means. Even if you add the tech attachment modifier, they both have weaknesses. Yeah, it's each other, but still. It is crazy how you'll have a moment like this where you need to have a basic understanding of modern entertainment. You still manage to mess it up, but it's there. It's there, right? And then you have the ending. Get ready, boss. It could be anything. Hold it. They're not attacking. Wait a minute. Is that... That's right. Cut me out the mission. I brought the motherfucking cavalry. A dinosaur? Greetings, my name is D'Artagnan. I'll Stop. Stop. I'm just gonna explain to you what happens next because I swear if I hear another second of this nigga talking, I'm going to become a domestic terrorist. We befriend the Velociraptors and we ride off into the sunset. The end. There's a lot more to it than that, but for the sake of my local statehouse's safety, I'm just gonna leave it out. And how the Saints save Christmas. The Saints Save Christmas. Alright, that's it for the mission packs. TLDR, you're not really missing much story-wise. Let's move on to the critique. So we're all in agreement that the story is terrible, right? I mean, you know when something's up when I reach a critiquing section in record time. The biggest issue is that it has no weight to it. You see, normally when you reach the end of a video game, you'll take a moment to reflect on a journey you went through with the protagonist. It can be simply boiled down to two questions, what was gained and what was lost. Using the Saints Row series as an example, in our quest to take over the city, we were betrayed, we had to rebuild a gang from the ground up, we almost died on multiple occasions, we lost Lynn, Carlos, and Aisha, even in Saints Row 3, Gat was killed off. You can call it Zombie Corpse or his big ass clone, but not the real deal. In Saints Row 4, however, they bring his dumb ass back, which nullifies the most crucial plot point in the last game. And the explanation for his return, I mean, did they think that nobody played Saints Row 3? I wish we didn't, but we did. I also have to mention how the whole earth was blown up, and at the end they're like, nah homie, we got time travel. Nothing was lost, which means the player won't give a shit about the story, and if they thought that the comedy was going to carry them, then they must be smoking an insane amount of crack. The majority of the jokes in this game fall into the following categories. Kinsey overcomplicates a task and the boss asks her to put it in layman's terms. When you're inside Matt's virtual oubliette, there's a decent chance that I'll be focusing on interfacing with the intrusion countermeasures, so pay attention to the console commands. Any less advice I'll understand. Don't get killed. Gotcha. Pop culture reference. Nostalgia bait. And last but not least, quirky and wacky moments. I'm still trying to recover from that time where the boss started stripping, and I'm 100% sure that my stone faced reaction to what's happening in front of me has little to do with my preconceived beliefs I have for this game. Character wise, there's not much to work with inside the story. They don't really interact with each other in the way that you expect. For example, you know Shandi, president of the Johnny Gat Dick Riding Club? Well, when he comes back, there's like one conversation between the two. Mind you, Shandi's simulation nightmare was watching Johnny die over and over again, and this is all we got. Zinyak is an okay antagonist, he's definitely better than Kilbane, and one could argue that he's a better character than Dane Vogel. He has a personality, he took multiple W's, and you could also learn more about him through a text adventure. I didn't bother, I'm just saying it's nice to have the option there. But he couldn't carry the story, and believe me, I tried my best to like it as much as I could, but it just wouldn't happen. But it's not all hate though, the gameplay is actually pretty good. In the simulation, 
position, you could run super fast, jump high, climb buildings, fire projectiles, give yourself buffs, and you could even have telekinesis. This? You're given a wide range of weapons to pick from, including an abduction gun, a black hole launcher, a gun that shoots dubstep, wow, showing your age there, Saints Row 4. All the weapons you get can be upgraded with more damage, fast reloads, and even special mods. They were in the last game, but there's more stuff now. The cars were also improved, which is funny because they're completely useless, there's no vehicle racing just like in the last game. And speaking of activities, there's more than enough. A lot of it's just mayhem, but there's also Professor Genki's mom in the Rift series. And the rest are super versions of returning activities, including Fight Club for Saints Row 2. I don't like it. Also, I'm pretty sure that both the activities and the diversions are all linked to the side quests, so if you want to hear some more dialogue from the crew, then there you go. So yeah, the gameplay isn't that bad, and you can't say that it's a GTA clone at this point. Now, Prototype on the other hand, that's a completely different story. You put these games side by side and you'll see how similar they are. That's not a con by the way, I'm just saying. Before I head out to play Saints Row 2022, I want to talk about Gat Out of Hell for a brief moment. I'm not doing a full review of this game by the way, there's just not that much to talk about really. I only want to show the part where we finally get our revenge on Dex. Enough's enough, Gat. Listen, you should only buy this game if the price drops to $15 or something, and if you do, just completely disregard the story. I'll see you later.